Nintendo in the 2000s were becoming incredibly successful with their lineup of handhelds. After the success of the original DS, Nintendo decided to try their hand at 3D graphics on the modern hardware and revolutionize how games could be experienced. After years in development, the 3DS was released on March 2011. Its grand opening in history paved the way for Nintendo's most recent and revolutionary console, the Nintendo Switch. Today, I'll be checking out the new 3DS XL and see if you should pick one up in 2020. If you guys haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and also hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. I'm going to be posting more of these Is It Worth It's every week and by you hitting the subscribe button, you'll be showing your support. But without further ado, let's get right into it. In the beginning of 2009, Nintendo was just coming off its award-winning streak with the Wii and DS handheld. The DS redefined what it meant to game on the go and sold a record-breaking 150 million units, making it the best-selling console of all time. At the same time, Nintendo's Wii console was pulling in numbers at a staggering 101 million units sold. After this winning streak, Nintendo began to pull their focus away from TV gaming and go straight into the handheld system. Hiroshi Yamauchi, former Nintendo president, discussed the ideas of a full 3D experience without the use of special glasses. Nintendo had already tried 3D versions of their consoles, such as the failure known as the Virtual Boy. Trials of 3D in Nintendo handhelds started all the way back in 2001 with the Game Boy Advance. Obviously, these new ideas of the Game Boy did not come to fruition, as the console lacked the hardware to do proper 3D natively. Nintendo decided to put the project on hold while they worked on the DS and Wii. After those successes, the company began drawing up new ideas for their new handheld. It was to be titled the 3DS and feature a full-fledged 3D support without the use of glasses. The Nintendo 3DS launched in Japan on February 26, 2011. It was met with massive amounts of success as this 3DS sported a modern interface, better graphics, and a much sleeker design opposed to the original DS. Nintendo would later create on four versions of this 3DS, which involved the 3DS, 3DS XL, 2DS, new 2DS XL, and the new 3DS XL. The new 3DS XL is the model I have here. The new 3DS XL featured the dual-core ARM 11 MP core CPU clocked at 268 MHz, a single-core ARM 9 chip, which was used for backwards compatibility with the original DS, 128MB of FC RAM and 6MB of video RAM, 2GB of EMCC storage, an 800 by 240 display, which was the upper screen, a DMP Pika 200 graphics card clocked at 133MHz and a 1750mAh battery. The new 3DS XL was a much more stylish design compared to the original 3DS and 3DS XL. It was very sleek and thin, plus it supported a modern design that looked up to date with most consoles now. The glossy finish complemented the aesthetic that Nintendo was going for, a modern revamp of their aging console. The older 3DS XL had changeable faceplates, where you could swap out different faceplates to make your DS suit your needs. The new 3DS XL has two cameras on the back to take advantage of the 3D camera software. It, has a, it features a card slot to put your cartridges in. It also has a port for your headphones and a stylus port with the power button right next to it. You also have LED indicators to show the charge that you are on and your connectivity to Wi-Fi. On the back, you have the power port, also with lanyard holes, because why not? You also have the right and left buttons. As you open the console, you're greeted with the massive 3D screen, which is 90% bigger than the original. Below, you have the touchscreen to enable 3D. You could just slide the 3D slider on to turn it on and turn it off. On top of the screen, you have the front-facing camera. Now, these cameras on the 3DS aren't amazing, and I wouldn't really recommend taking photos with them since everyone has a phone now, but they are there. Sandwiching the screen are the two stereo speakers. They sound a lot better than the original DS, but aren't amazing compared to the other handheld speakers, like the Switch. There's a video on the top right corner if you want to see my review of it. You also have the volume slider, and below you have the circular D-pad and the regular D-pad with the X, Y, and A, and B buttons. Opposite that, you have the start and select buttons right below it. You also have the C-stick, but I've yet to find a use for it. Opening the new 3DS XL, you're greeted with the home screen, which lists all your favorite applications, very similarly to the DSi. The menu is simple to navigate and has a nice, easy design, which is easy to get used to. The 3DS XL comes with many entertaining applications like the Mii Maker and Mii Plaza, which allows you to interact with any of your friends or people you walk by as this console featured a pass-by mechanic, where you could have your 3DS interact with anyone else's 3DS when walking past them. Your Mii could sync up to other people's 3DS and vice versa. This created a new way to meet others when walking through cities, but to me, it just seems like a gimmick as you don't really see people using their 3DSs anymore. The Nintendo eShop is available and you can still buy games from it as Nintendo supports it completely. You also have the incredible useful download play, which is seen on the DS. A great feature the 3DS was shipped with was its ability to scroll through the internet. You could theoretically Google anything you wanted, and you could also use YouTube. Wait, no, that 
doesn't work anymore. I wouldn't really suggest using the internet on the 3DS, as it doesn't look amazing on its low res screen, but hey, it's there. Some of the online services have been discontinued and some are on the way out, so keep that in mind when picking up this system. The games on the system are amazing, and Nintendo has featured such a massive variety of games, like Super Smash Bros, Pokemon Sun and Alpha Sapphire, Terraria and Metroid Samus Returns. My two favorites are Super Smash Bros and Metroid Samus Returns. Super Smash Bros was my introduction to the fighter genre of games and boy, what a great introduction it was. Battling all your favorite Nintendo characters is such a great experience. Mastering abilities and special moves to overcome your competition is what makes the game so fun. Plus, it gets even better when you get to verse online players and local players at school. Me and my friend John have been battling each other on the same game for the past week at school and it's been nothing short of fun. I may be utter garbage, but it hasn't stopped me from having a great time and hanging out with my friends, which is essentially Nintendo's aim as a company. Next, we have Metroid Samus Returns. I recently picked this up from EB Games for about 40 bucks and has been probably one of my favorite buys for this month. The game featured outstanding levels and pretty damn good graphics to help you feel immersed in the game. This title was a reimagining of the Game Boy version, which was released back in 1991. And let me tell you, Nintendo did a great job with this title. The atmosphere of isolation and ambiguity that the series has been known for was perfectly executed with this title and is a perfect successor to the terrible Federation Force. Yeah, let's not talk about that one. The music paired with the level designs helps to immerse the player in this mysterious world, crawling with fear and ambiguity. This is the perfect game to keep us Metroid fans busy until they release a Prime 4. If you're a Metroid fan like me, then I would highly recommend this title to anyone looking to get into the platformer-based Metroid games, like Super Metroid, Metroid Fusion, and Zero Mission. Another aspect of the 3DS is its homebrewing capabilities. Homebrewing has been a massive buying factor for the 3DS, as you can install custom software to allow you to play 3DS games, and some PC games like Half-Life. Homebrewing adds this whole new subsection to the 3DS, and allows users to mess around with its software and give them a better experience. Homebrewing is the process of using various exploits to allow your device to run custom software. This can include games, emulators, and various tools. This is fairly simple and a quick process that just about anyone can accomplish, and it works on all versions of the 3DS, including the 2DS. If you guys want to see a more in-depth look at homebrewing, tell me in the comments. The new 3DS XL is a great handheld, and is definitely worth picking up for anyone looking to have hours of fun. It is still completely supported with the majority of applications working on it and it still has a lot of life in it. There are a ton of games on the system and still have some titles coming out on it. When buying this console for this review, I really questioned whether it was worth it or not, but after playing it for a week, I can definitely see the appeal. I'd recommend this to anyone looking to get into the Nintendo handheld market, and for someone looking to homebrew as this has so many homebrewing opportunities. Otherwise, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'd like to see you all in the next one.